Hi everyone, I'm Colin Humphreys, CEO at Sintasso, the creators of Cratix, the platform engineering framework. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about 20 years platform engineering, 10 years platform as a product, and the five lessons I've learned during that period. Now, I started my career back in the late 90s in tech support at a computer shop. I started building platforms in 2004, and I built platforms for some of these kind of brands, brands you'd recognize, and I'd like to think I built out a reasonable proportion of the internet. I founded my first startup back in 2012, which was Cloud Credo. At Cloud Credo, we collaborated a lot with a number of companies, including Pivotal. And we worked with Pivotal on uh, the foundations for building out something called Platform as a Product. And we co-authored a white paper called Why You Should Treat Your Platform as a Product, which has been highly influential. My startup, Cloud Credo, was acquired by Pivotal. And I was then working at Pivotal for a while. Pivotal, as you know, was acquired by VMware. Uh, I left VMware with the founding team from Cloud Credo three years ago, and we're now building Cratix, which is the platform engineering framework. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about these five lessons learned during that period. Firstly, employ a product mindset. Then, find the right abstractions for your organization. Democratize your platform. Everywhere is brownfield. Everything is complex. And lastly, day one is easy. Day 2000 is hard. So let's look at employing a product mindset for building platforms. What does it mean to employ a product mindset? Well, what happens if we don't employ a product mindset? Typically in that case, we'll employ a project mindset. A project mindset typically means having a start and an end date to your platform building, doing a whole bunch of platform engineering, and then releasing that to your users and just hoping they do well with it. This typically involves things like Gantt charts and dependency management, this kind of thing. Well, I think if we think about uh, um, building great platforms, you have to realize building platforms is more than just the engineering element, more than just the building element. We also have to think about what do our users want? And we have to listen to them, learn from them, get feedback from them, and then iterate on our platform. So I want to say that platform engineering is necessary for building great platforms, but it is not sufficient. You also need product management you also need design skills because if you're going to build a great platform, you need to find what is not just feasible from engineering, but is desirable, your customers want it, and is viable for your company to build out. And if you bring those three things together, you will have a successful product. And if you employ this uh, way of thinking with your platform, you will build a successful platform product. So when you're building out that, collaborate with your users, walk a mile in their shoes, learn about what they're doing. And when you've done that and you're building out some of those uh, elements to your platform, use uh, X as a service to scale. So deliver those things as a service so you have that scalability, you have that uh, ability to drive things forward. You need to capture metrics from those users. You need to respond to their feedback. So you need to continuously innovate, iterate, and learn about what they're doing and bring that value to your platform. So instead of having a project mindset where it is started, just finished, think about this as an infinite game of learning and developing and adapting to your users' needs. Lesson two, find the right abstractions for your organization. Prior to platform engineering, a lot of people like me were doing what I've described as bad DevOps. This is where you take the you write it, you run it mentality and you decide that your team is going to build the entire platform themselves and every team in the organization is going to build the entire platform themselves. So I had a lot of success working with a big charity in the UK. Here's a blog post I wrote um, about the success we have with that charity. But I was dismayed when I was working with the charity to learn that we had five different teams all building five different platforms, when in reality, uh, any one of those platforms could probably have helped out with the other ones. So we could have actually been a far more efficient in the way we did delivery. When I speak to CTOs at the moment, they tell me that approximately 80% of the application team's time is spent on toil, is spent on building their own little internal platforms, is spent on operational workloads, and they really want to reduce that. So I think platform engineering can really help to reduce that if we find the right abstractions in those businesses. So when you're looking for those abstractions, you need to think about what is common to the teams in your organization, but what is unique to your business. If something is not unique to your business, you're most likely ever be able to buy it off the shelf or found a cloud service that already delivers it. And you should use those things rather than building it yourself. In platform engineering, we should look at delivering what is unique to the business the platform's being built in, but is common across the teams that the platform is serving. And that's how we can bring efficiency and we can bring security and we can bring productivity to the organizations we're building platforms for. 
when we're creating those abstractions, we need to create composable abstractions. So when you put your building blocks in place, you need to enable people to build those blocks up to higher level abstractions to make people more productive. But you also need to create decomposable abstractions. We often see these golden paths being created, which lock in, here's how you're going to use CICD, here's exactly that framework you're going to use, here's how you're going to use uh, uh, staging and production, here's exactly how everything's going to work perfectly laid out for you. But often those things have a lot of friction, have a lot of resistance, because people actually have some opinions about how some of those things that work. So your, your abstractions that you create need to be composable to form high level abstractions, but also decomposable. So if people want to break them down and use them slightly differently, that option is still available to them. So the wrong abstractions, the kind of things to avoid are things like the application wire, where your platform is taking opinions about exactly how your application wires together. And often you might conflict with something like Spring Framework or Rails Framework, where the application teams take their own opinions about how things are wired together. So yes, make lives easier for those people if you can, but don't try and overrule those opinions. and Don't try and dictate to them. Your application teams will have their own opinions about how things work. And lastly, if you try and create that one true golden path, that golden path I mentioned where everything is precisely prescribed to your application teams, you are going to annoy them, you are going to be dictating to them, and you're going to reduce their productivity as they have a fight with what you've delivered. So try to avoid that. Our third lesson is that you need to democratize your platform. So to deliver meaningful, productive, valuable software in an enterprise often involves a variety of stakeholders, a variety of people need to get involved. If you don't democratize your platform and let those people in, you're going to have a great struggle actually getting that value into production and delivering value for the customers of your organization. So we know there are a lot of people in organizations that can say no to what you're trying to do. And getting those people included and bought into the platform and bringing their value to the platform is tremendously powerful. So I worked with a large American insurance company about 10 years ago, and they were they had a system where they were um, uh, taking up to two years to get value into production. It was rid ridiculously complicated. All the things had to go through all the compliance, all the governance, all of those kind of things. The big change we made for them was taking all of those things that people had to do whenever they ship code to production and bringing that all into the platform so that it was all automated and enabled by the platform. And they went from having, I say, six months to two years in terms of deployment cycles to being able to deploy multiple times a day. And that's because we were able to democratize the platform and let everyone bring their value to the platform. So creating the self-service API for your platform, that's just table stakes. Any platform should have a self-service API that has various different interfaces available to it. You need to go above that and think that you help other people bring their value to that self-service API. So help your subsystem teams, people like your databases, CICD, identity, all of those teams that are creating value, help them bring their value to the platform and contribute and collaborate to that platform. But also enable um, teams like security, networking, those kind of enablement teams, help them bring what they offer and decorate the services that are there. So all of your databases are secure, are compliant, are governed, all of your CIC, CICD systems are secure, are compliant, are governed. So you have these subsystems, those teams, you bring them to the platform, and then you take your enabling teams that have that kind of uh, uh, cross-cutting needs they need to apply everywhere, like security, networking, etc. enable them to decorate the services with what they need. And that is how you can democratize your platform. Lesson number four, everywhere is brownfield, everything is complex. So during my time at Pivotal, I was heavily involved in taking Cloud Foundry to the world. Cloud Foundry is a platform as a service focused on 12-factor applications. And we would go and talk to people about their applications and say, oh, you should rebuild everything, uh, uh, refactor it all, and bring it along as a 12-factor application to Cloud Foundry. And for some places, that worked well. For other places, that didn't work quite so well. I remember talking to a CTO at one of the world's top banks. He told me he loves Cloud Foundry, but what else can we do for the other 99% of his workloads that didn't work well in Cloud Foundry. So that leads you to this sense that, yes, if your org is small and you've got like very basic apps going in there, please feel free to use something like Heroku, Netlify, any other kind of platform as a service. But if your organization is significant, has scale, has compliance, has governance, has 
heritage applications that have been there for a while that maybe don't kind of conform to platforms as a service, you're going to have complexity. So basically any enterprise is going to have lots of stuff there already. It's brownfield stuff. And everything that's going to be there is going to have some complexity to it because of the regulations, the compliance, the governance, the, the systems that exist within those organizations. And that makes things challenging to work with. But we have to be honest about that and think that our platforms have to adapt to that landscape rather than trying to dictate to it, no, 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 those applications aren't allowed on the platform. So beneath that, in any organization, you're going to see that there is no single infrastructure layer. So you can't just say, well, everything's on Kubernetes. You're going to see lots of Terraform, Pulumi. You're going to see cloud APIs. You're going to see the infrastructure of code tools, your chef, your puppet, your Ansible, your source stack, all of that kind of stuff. You're going to see lots of scripting, you're going to see some declarative stuff, some imperative stuff. Your platform is going to have to work with all of this if it's going to bring real value to your organization. What you need to focus on with your platform building is enabling people to bring their value in an X as a service mentality. So you need a clear, consistent API in front of the value people have been bringing, not just bringing now, but people have been bringing for a while. So there's more legacy heritage services. So that clear, consistent API needs to be there for your old and for your new resources if your platform is going to deliver true value inside of your organization. 1000 is hard. So many years ago, 10 years ago, uh, I gave a talk at DockerCon 2014, where I announced a scheduler. And it turned out five different organizations announced schedulers uh, on that day. One of them was Kubernetes, interestingly. Um, someone came up to me after I gave that talk uh, who was running a containerized environment, that, uh, running containers that had been built with Docker. They had 30,000 containers they were looking after, and they'd scanned them. And approximately 90% had the Heartbleed bug. And they said to me, okay, people have had this really nice journey with Docker building all these containers, but now I've got Heartbleed across all of them. I don't know where they came from. I don't know who built them. They're just there. What can I do about it? And I couldn't really give an answer to that because this is really tough. So it was very easy day one to build those containers, but maintaining them was really, really difficult. So that's why we say day one is easy, day 2000 is hard. How do you work against this? Well, you need to organize and standardize. You need to take control of the fleet of things you're looking after. You need to get them into a structured setup so that you understand where they're at, which versions they're at, what software is really installed there. And you can do this via that X as a service mentality, thinking about standardizing the things you offer as a service. I think antithetical to that is this notion that um, the way you should offer the things from your platform is by offering people code bases and allowing them just to fork the code. Each time they fork your code, each time they clone your code and they start uh, uh, modifying it, that is a becomes a new and special snowflake that needs to be looked after independently. So each time you start offering code bases, you are actually creating ticking time bombs for the future of your organization. So sharing code is a maintenance nightmare for your organization. Don't share code, deliver things as a service. As I mentioned, as a service, uh, manage the fleet. So when you're delivering things as a service, don't just create them, leave people with them. You need to take everyone forward on a journey where they're continuously upgraded, continuously secured, continuously compliant. If you bring all the resources that you deliver as a service with you on that journey, just how the hyperscalers do, think about the public clouds, think about how they're taking people with them on that journey when they are offering things as a service at scale. Bring that mentality to what you're doing. You need to take everyone with you on that journey. Otherwise, when you're handing them resources that they have to maintain, that they have to keep secure, you are just giving them a maintenance burden. And the purpose of your platform is to make life easier for your customers, to make life better for your customers. So if you aren't thinking about day 2000, if you're just making it easy for them on day one, but difficult in the future, your platform is underserving your users. We've come to the end of 20 years platform engineering, 10 years platform as a product, and the five lessons learned. For a quick recap, those five lessons were, number one, employ a product mindset. Number two, find the right abstractions for your organization. Number three, democratize your platform. Number four, Everywhere is brownfield, everything is complex. And number five, day one is easy, day 2000 is hard. I hope you enjoyed this talk and I hope you find these lessons useful as you're building platforms in the future.